Hi, Jen. Hi, everyone. How going? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Oh, Bellamy said hey to you. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone. Thank you for joining us today as everyone's coming in. Feel free to say hello in the chat. Tell us where you're from. Tell us if you have a birthday, if you lost a tooth. Bell uh, Bellamy, have you lost any teeth? I've lost two, but I have one on the bottom top that's trying to get them out, but it can't. Yeah. Ooh. That was slow going, so we'll see okay. what comes. I understand. How I got one out is I bumped into someone in the <gasps> What? And it was bleeding. Wow. These things happen. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to use string for that one. Oh, <laughs> we got a birthday. Happy birthday. Welcome everyone. Keep telling us where you're from and if it's your birthday or you lost a tooth like Bellamy a while back. <laughs> <laughs> we love to celebrate your milestones as we get ready to do some crafts. Absolutely. We got a lost tooth. Love it. Okay. Somebody has a cat. I have a cat. Another birthday. Wow. May's a great month for birthdays, isn't it? I keep hearing you say that. <laughs> we have a bunch of family members with birthdays this week, so I understand. Yeah, I don't have a birthday or a birth week. I have a birth month. That's the way it should be. Got to celebrate. Yep. <laughs> All right. We're so happy to have you guys. We're going to be doing a paper lantern today. Lots of easy stuff. We'll go through the supplies really soon and get started once everybody gets in to the class. Oh, we have somebody with two black cats. You're all set for Halloween. I can't wait till we get to Halloween Kids Club. Can I just say that like, that's my favorite holiday and I'm- I know, I think we've decided on some Halloween painted rocks and then I feel like you have a list going. Yes, you're not wrong. <laughs> Has Zoe already decided her costume or we're not there yet? Oh, like 12 times. Okay, good. Yeah, I think recently it's Barb from Trolls. Ah, we right? do like or Barb. Cruella de Vil. Are you going to be Barb or Cruella? Barb. Barb. Bellamy's already picked hers out, too. Now. <gasps> yes. The Descendants, Daughter oh. of Maleficent. <laughs> we could quote the rest of the movie if you'd like. Oh, my gosh. I bet Zoe would love that movie. All right. I've watched one, two, and three of the sentence. Man, I haven't even seen one. You will. I'm behind. <laughs> one of my friends told me about it. That's how I knew. Well, now you told me. All right. We're going to get started. So we're going to make a lantern today. For those of you who have joined us with your supplies, um, we need paper, uh, pipe cleaners, you have a ruler and some kid approved scissors and anything you want to decorate with. We've got some little foam pieces here from the little foam kits at Michael's. Uh, here's our pipe cleaner, um, you know, glue stick. We're using tape in our house instead of staples. I think Bellamy and Catherine are gonna use their stapler. Yeah. Hi, uh, Jen. There was a question about whether there's a template for today's project. Nope, no template. All you need is a ruler. And if you don't have a ruler, we'll tell you how to do it anyway. Perfect. Super simple today. All right. So um, this is the lantern that we're going to be making. And then we are going to go ahead and get started with our construction paper. Um, similar to Jen, I have the same supplies laid out. What you see here is just some stickers for decorating. That's the only thing um, that I think really varies from what she showed. So the first thing you want to decide is the outside color of your lantern. And so that mine matches the example here, I'm going to start with a red piece of paper. Um, we are making ours red and white and blue. 
as a Memorial Day table topper type of craft. So you're going to take your um, outside color construction paper and fold it so that it is long. Yeah. Long, just like this. One question, Catherine. Um, yeah. If you don't have a pipe cleaner, is there anything else you can use? Definitely. Sweet. You could use um, a piece of paper to make the lantern. Um, it's just for the topper here. So you could definitely use a strip of paper and then adhere it on both sides. And I saw earlier that if you didn't have um, a hole punch, no problem. I actually could not find mine when I was doing this craft. And I just used some scissors to make slits to put the pipe cleaner through. So again, if you were to use paper, you would just adhere it on both sides. If you don't have a hole punch, no problem. All right. So the first thing that you want to do um, after you fold your paper is make your, is grab your ruler and you're going to measure about one inch um, into the open flap side. And you just want to draw a straight line down the paper. If you don't have a ruler, I just use my thumb usually uh, so that I'm measuring about an inch. And it looks like my ruler just got borrowed. <laughs> Actually, you can go first. Oh, I can do it first? Okay. Here, Bellamy, you can do it too. So measuring about an inch in and drawing one big line. Here you go. You want to do it too? You can also use a straight edge of a book or uh, another piece of paper too. If you want to get a straight edge and you don't have a ruler, that works really nicely. All right. So once you measure that, then you're going to turn your paper the other way. And in one inch increments all the way down this line, you are going to draw another straight line. So the line that you're drawing this direction is going to be your cut lines. That's what's going to make these nice slits here on your lantern. So again, you're just going in one inch increments, making, I just make little dashes and then go back and draw my long lines, but whatever is easier for you. Um, again, you can use other kinds of straight edge type of tools. You can use your thumb for spacing. Um, or anything else you have laying around. The main point here is you just want to try to get them pretty evenly spaced if you can. But it's pretty straightforward otherwise. And you're just going to go all the way down your paper with um, those lines and they're going to end at the line that you drew previously. So my new lines are going all the way down ending at the line that I drew first. How are we doing out there, everyone? I see some comments that it's hard to see. Um, I can definitely grab a marker real quick and go over these lines for you guys so you can follow the directions a little bit easier. I will tell you on your end, um, you're gonna wanna use a pencil because you're gonna cut on the lines. But I'll do a marker so that you can see the lines better. So if you look at my top down view here, I'm, I'm holding mine up too, so that might there you go. There you go. So you can see here's your, your long line across the edge that opens. So make sure you're, you're doing that one against the edge that opens, not the edge that closes. And then you're drawing your intersecting lines down to the side that's folded. Thanks, Jen. And then I went over marker two just to be Oh, yeah, you can so see it a lot better now. Yeah. yeah. No problem. I do not mind at all. Joey, you want to cut this? So then once you have your lines drawn, and again, for those people just hopping on, you're going to take your construction paper that you want for the outside of your lantern to match my example. I'm sticking with red. Fold your paper lengthwise. I'll make one more because I know some people are wanting us to go a little bit slower. I do not mind at all. Then you're going to take your ruler and go in an inch from the open flaps. So open flaps. 
I'm going to go in one inch and draw a line from top to bottom. Hey, Catherine, can you um, repeat how many inches and the dimensions again? Definitely. Please? Everything's in one inch today. So even when we do the strips here in a minute, they're going to be an inch. So that makes it really easy to remember. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're going to go in one inch here from the edge of the paper, go in one inch and draw a line all the way down. So as you can see, that's what this is right here. I went in one inch and drew all the way down. And then you're going to start at the edge and in one inch increments, you're going to draw a line from your first line to the folded edge of the paper. Any other questions out there that we can help with Karina? I can't wait to hear what colors people are using. Just, uh, just some requests to go slower. Um, I know okay. you're trying to repeat um, as much as possible. Yep. I went ahead and started over um, on one more. So if you were already caught up, you'll just wait for us for one second. And then um, I start over on a fresh piece of paper to try to stay in line with anyone who just joined us. So what I'm doing right now is just making those horizontal lines. It'll be these right here that go from the folded edge to my long line that I drew first. But definitely feel uh, free if you are caught up to tell us in the chat what colors you're using or where you think you'll be displaying your lantern. Um, I know for us, we're going to use them for some Memorial Day decorations. All right, so you want to see my colors? They're very different from yours. Okay. Zoe and I are doing neons, of course. I know you're shocked. Awesome. So we're going to do a pink outside, yellow inside, and then the green trim. Very cool. I love the neon. That's a great summer palette. Oh, we have some people doing pink and purple, orange and blue, yellow and green. This is good. There, there was a question earlier about how many um, sheets of paper we needed in total. I think three would be the best number, three different colors. Yes. If you don't have a bunch of colors, you, you can always take white paper and decorate. So you can color it with markers, you can, you know, color it with crayons, whatever you have. And if you don't have construction paper, like I'm using, um, I think Catherine's using construction paper and I'm using a, like a printer paper, so it's a little bit thinner. All right, so if everyone's with us, um, I am gonna go ahead and cut the strips here. So you're just gonna cut and then stop at the line. Pretty straightforward on that, just cut and stop at the line. And then we're gonna take some time in a minute to decorate our lanterns. Um, and we'll also take a couple minutes to cut these strips out that go at the top and bottom. So if you are still um, drawing or measuring, no problem. And then also like any of our other classes, if you have been on with us before, we'll have this available for you to view um, tomorrow. And then you can also make your lantern then if today you're just watching and you wanna actually do the craft later, that's another option as well. Or if you want to go back and make a neon version like Jen, which we might be doing that. Always a good idea. Or our school colors, because we do have someone about to graduate kindergarten over here. <laughs> that would be Bellamy. All right. So once you make your slits, this is what your piece of paper will look like. So you can kind of envision your lantern um, coming to life a little bit. So at this point, I want to cut two more strips with you guys and then we'll take a minute to decorate. So you'll take your um, contrasting piece of paper or same color depending on your design and this is what I'm using for the top and the bottom. And what I'm doing is just cutting the long side one inch each. So like I said earlier, everything today is just in simple 
one inch um, slices. So I will make one big long line down this sheet, cut one strip at an inch and that will be for the top. Then I'll make another and it will be for the bottom. And Catherine, can you confirm um, the size of the sheets that you're using? Yeah, I'm using standard construction paper sheets. So um, I believe construction paper is close to a nine by 12. Um, but yeah. I would say anything that's copy paper size, which is eight and a half by 11, um, or if you want to use something a little bit bigger, a nine by 12 will work too. Yeah, I'm using a printer paper size. So mine's eight and a half by 11. So I can look at the directions a little. Are you doing one inch increments too, Jen? Yes, mm -hmm. that worked out really nicely for mine. Yeah, that was what I found as well. So uh, can I show you a little hack that I found? I love a hack. Okay, so you know how you fold your paper and then you draw your lines and then you have to cut along the lines, but when you do that, it shows the lines. So what I did was when I was done cutting it, I reversed the fold so that the lines are on the inside and you don't see them on your lantern. So funny, that's what I was just about to do with the marker one. Oh. <laughs> Great minds. I'm like, I love a hack. Tell me about it. <laughs> I will give you all the credit on that one. All right. How's everyone doing? So our strips are gonna be for the top and the bottom. You can kind of envision this coming to life. I'm just gonna lay them on here to show you real quick. And then this is the fun part. Um, this is where you get to decorate your lantern. So you can decorate um, any of the strips or just decorate the top and the bottom. You can draw stars, flowers. I think Jen has some fun foam stickers. Earlier today, I was using um, foil stars because like I said, we were sticking with the Memorial Day theme, but this is where you can um, also leave it plain if you want to have something that really is just about the color and just about the shape. Um, but feel free to grab your markers, colored pencils, crayons, anything you have, stickers, glitter, glue, um, all your favorite crafts, and decorate your lantern. Catherine, there's been yeah. some more requests to see if um, you can uh, talk through the blue strips. Definitely. So um, what I did for the blue strips was I just took a full sheet of construction paper. This one's already been cut down. Um, and on the long side, I measured one inch and just did one long strip. Again, these are just going to be for your top and your bottom of your lantern. So I will go ahead and uh, op uh, open this back up so that you can see. So whenever we did our cuts, we went from the short to our line. And then when you're done cutting, it does open up and kind of start taking shape to look like a lantern. Um, and so the strips that I'm cutting will just go across the top and across the bottom to make it more ornamental and decorative. All right. So, like I said, one inch strips, and then you are good to keep cutting. Yes. And just yes. a quick note that this is being recorded. So um, we'll be able to send this out to everyone if you just want to watch and then restart uh, or try the project later. Yeah, and then yes, you are gluing the strips down. Yeah, gluing, taping, whatever is easy. Yep, or taping, good yeah. call. I, I found that this craft was pretty easy to do without glue. Um, so I took a break from glue this week, or today, I guess not this week. We have more fun coming on Thursday. But yeah, once you're done with your long strips, they are going to be what goes at the top and at the bottom of your lantern. This is also a good time to decorate too. So if you're doing anything intricate on your lantern, if you wanna draw with markers and you don't wanna wait until it's constructed, um, now's a good time to do 
those pieces before you put it into the circle and it becomes a little bit more difficult. Definitely. Bellamy is using some of our uh, Creatology stamp markers and stamping Ooh, shapes. Smart. Or, I almost got out the stamps. I thought about it too, and then she found the stamp marker. So uh, I, we don't have any of those. Mm. To put that on the list. They're super fun. I will show them to you if anyone um, is interested. But they're our Creatology markers, and in they come in a clear package, and they each have a different shape that yep. at the top. Um, so she one used a, one is a piece of candy, which is a lollipop. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! It's candy, but this has a bunch of little stamps on it. Um, we have some stars and hearts. It's kind of hard to see on the darker paper, but they um, they stamp pretty well. We like them. How's everyone's decorating going? You can see my first one. I just put a couple stickers on. Um, I did not color it as much as I'm coloring today, but I wanted to draw some stars instead of using my stickers. And Bellamy's using stamps. And Jen, is Zoe decorating or are you decorating on your own? Um, I will, I'm probably decorating on my own. She, she decorated a little bit for me. Yeah. She has already moved on to a new project. All right, so once you've done some decorating and what I might do too is draw some squiggles up some of my lantern just so you guys can see some different ways to decorate. The next step we'll be doing is assembly. When you're assembling, well, I, actually, I'll wait. I'm going to wait until you, you're actually ready to assemble. I have a question. I'm ready. What's your thought? Okay. So I've done this a couple of times, and I've done it a couple of different ways. And I've taped my inner tube, and then I've taped my outer tube and tried to match it. And I'm thinking if we do the outer tube first, then you'll know exactly what size the inner tube needs to be to slide it in. Is that how you did yours or did you do the inner tube first? That is how I did it. So I actually started with just doing the outer tube. Okay. Um, and then as I was, I stapled that so it would like stay put. <laughs> yep. And then I added the bands at the top and bottom. And then um, I slid the white paper in. Yep. Okay and kind of stapled it one more time. And I tried to keep my staples just on one side of the lantern so that they would be essentially facing the back, right? Yep. Um, so that was kind of my strategy, but I think absolutely Jen has a great point for everyone crafting with us today is truly that there's more than one way to um, put it together. I think once you have all the elements, um, you know, there's no kind of wrong way to assemble it. You'll, you'll get a very Mommy. similar result no matter what. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of was my learning. The other thing I liked about doing it this way was it didn't matter if my tape was showing when I assembled the lantern because I kind of covered it up with the uh, trim on the top and bottom. So I liked putting just that first piece together and kind of going from there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely, okay, so I've done this like three times now. I definitely like putting I like your method. Do the outside first. That worked way better. Did it? Yes, way better. Okay. So for everyone following along, this is why I like using the tape too. Um, for me, it just was so much faster to assemble um, when I was able to use the tape. So once you just make your uh, cylinder, then that's when I went back and added the top band in the bottom band. And then again, with my tape all being in one spot, that's where I was trying to just keep the adhesives all together. Um, so it'll take me a couple minutes to tape these. So someone's asking to repeat the step after decorating and really it's just a symbol. So once you're done decorating, you'll just roll it into a cylinder shape and make sure the edges line up um, and adhere them together. Whether you use a stapler or a piece of tape, that's um, all that we're doing at this point after we're done decorating, because if you cut out your outside of your lantern and your strip, then you have 
um, taking care of all the parts that you need in order to make your lantern come to life. Uh, one question, uh, could the inner paper be a toilet paper roll instead since it's sturdy? It could be if your outer lantern is that size. Um, using a full piece of construction paper, um, mine was much taller. You could also use a paper towel roll, I think kind of similar result to your point, it's sturdier. The other little tip would be to use cardstock for the inside, um, which is what I have here. So I had cardstock for the inside so that it helps it stay up a little bit better. I think you'll also find that once you adhere everything, it's a little bit sturdier than that first outside piece. This kind of feels like an octopus to me <laughs> versus your final version. Um, this one stands up just great all by itself, doesn't really tilt over um, anything like that. So great question. I love reusing anything you can. So if it makes more sense for you to reuse a paper towel roll or what have you, definitely go for it. I also love to use um, scraps of construction paper instead of fresh pieces. So I am right there with you on trying to reuse what I have when I do my crafts. So I think I saw a question on how do we make the sides pop out? Um, so the inside paper is slightly shorter than your outside lantern. So when you tape it down, it pooches off the, the sides where you've cut it. Yeah, like Catherine's showing right there. Yep, so Jen, how did you um, cut yours down or how did you manage that on your side? I, I did. So I just took an inch off of the, the long edge so that it was an inch shorter than what the paper was that I was using. And that gives it the perfect amount to like pucker out on the sides like this. Yep. I'm telling you this one inch roll, it's the way to do this craft. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're on the brain. Yeah, it's super easy. And it's not like, it's one of those uh, cool crafts that like, if you don't do something exact, it does not matter, um, you know. Totally. If you, if you forget to cut that inside piece or you do something a little bit off, if your strips aren't all the same size, it's a pretty forgiving um, craft. It definitely does not require precision, which I love. And then I also think that it adds to the uniqueness, especially if you're making multiples um, in order to use them, like we said earlier, for kind of a table decoration um, or anything like that. And then what I was wondering too, is how this would look with like a battery powered candle inside it. So that will be what I try later today. That's a, that's a great idea. I love that. Little in that light. case, I think you'd want to use computer paper because it's a little bit more sheer than yeah. cardstock. But just a thought as you're, as you're all kind of doing the craft inside us and thinking about what you'll do with your creations later. So that's why I went with yellow. Funny, I went with yellow on the inside because I was trying to get like light coming out of the lantern. Yes. All right, so I am going to, um, I'm gonna do one more point of assembly and then I'm gonna keep going and help Bellamy assemble hers. So if you are not ready to fully assemble, no worries. We're gonna do um, Bellamy's as well. So you'll get to catch us with this next one. Um, but to Jen's point, you'll take an inch off of the long side of your inside paper. So similar, similar to my example, I'm gonna use white again. So what I did the first time, and Jen, you'll have to tell me if this is what works for you, but I basically put it in there um, to kind of let the lantern tell me where to um, close it up. Because what I found is if you did not adhere the paper, then it busted open your little lantern. So what I mean by that is I put the paper on the inside, use that to tell me um, how wide the tube should be. And then I did one little quick piece of tape while it was in here and then I pull it out and finish adhering it together. So how did you do yours, Jen? So that's basically what I did with mine too. And, and I think I, I found that the tape worked really well for me, but, and it's clear. So I heard you saying that you hide your staples and that's kind of how I'm approaching my tape. Um, but yeah, that worked. 
Yeah. All right. So I just taped one in, slipped it out, and then I used that as my guide on size. And yeah, I just like that really super crystal clear tape, um, especially when I'm crafting. So I was taping both ends and then giving it one good little tape in the middle just to keep it closed. That's really all you're going for is you don't want this to bunch open. And then, like I said, if you are not on this step, no worries. I'm going to come back and do um, help my daughter assemble her lantern and we will show you one more time some of these steps. All right. So this is kind of where we're at. You slip it in and then you can see the little cute little bunching starting to happen. So there's a few ways that you can adhere it to the outside. Um, the easiest thing, in my opinion, is to go ahead and decide where your handle is going to attach and you'll make those slits and then put your pipe cleaner through and that's what I use to adhere it at the top. And then at the bottom, I did do a couple quick staples. So that will be uh, my next step is to go ahead and do a quick staple at the bottom. And then at the top, we'll decide where um, the pipe cleaner gets to adhere. And again, if you don't have hole punch, no problem. I couldn't find mine either. So um, I just used some slits with my scissors. So what you're seeing me do now is just cut a little slot for my slit on one side and then try to kind of undo the fold as best I can and then I'm going to go straight across here and cut another slit and this is where I will adhere my pipe cleaner which is going to help keep this all intact and hold um, the papers together and give you this finished little lantern look. Tell me I love your decorations. Thank you. I'm spending my time trying to make it pretty. <laughs> All right, so then I'm just going on the outside, pushing it through the slit, giving myself, surprise, about an inch <laughs> of leverage, folding that up, as you can see here. Just fold your little edge up and then twisting it together to hold on. And then what I use is to kind of just take the strength of the pipe cleaner to help it make a really nice circle. Um, so I let that handle kind of help me make my shape. And this is my decorated lantern. And then this is the one that I made before the class. That one's a little bit taller. This one's a little bit shorter. I love that you can get different looks all with one craft. And then for those who would like to see more assembly, I'm going to put those two aside and I'm going to help assemble this one we have going right here. Okay. So for anyone who is curious about assembly, hold on one second, I need to start over. So I'm going to go show you straight from the point where we did the cuts. So you have your long side and we cut our strips. Once your strips are cut, you'll open your piece of paper, either decorate or not, totally up to you. First thing you're going to do is take this and make it into that cylinder shape and then attach it at the top and bottom. Sorry, I fell off the screen a little. Um, you'll take your paper, make your cylinder shape and attach it at the top and bottom. So that's what we did first. And then from there, we added our strips and then we added our inside. You want yours to be tall. Okay, great. Here's the paper. Like you're already on the okay, I'm getting art direction from my daughter. So. <laughs> Good job, Bellamy. She's like tall, not small, got a lot of rules. That's okay. I like it. She, girl knows what she wants. Yes, she does. All right. I see some people saying that they're done. So feel free while we're still assembling this one to show us um, your pictures of your lantern. Like I said, I am most excited to see what colors. So maybe Karina or Jen can tell me what they see out there while I continue. Okay, I'm, I'm holding up my lantern and I'm gonna start looking at everybody. Oh, I see a lot of pink ones. Oh, there's a red one. 
very nice. If you guys don't have your video on, you can turn your video on and share. Oh, a blue one, a red one. Oh, somebody did stripes on theirs. A green one. This is good. These are easy enough. I feel like you could make a few of these, you know, and decorate your table with them. Oh, somebody has a light in theirs already. What? Oh, cool. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, we've got a pirate. Our These are really good, guys. We've got people that are still crafting. That's okay. Me too. <laughs> the thing about crafts, everybody goes at a different pace. Let me tell you something. I'm a painter, and I'm the slowest painter you've ever met in your life. And there's other people that they paint so fast. My daughter, she can paint really fast. So these are looking good. Oh, we got a black one with yellow inside. I really like that. Got style. <laughs> All right, so for those who are still assembling, I rolled the uh, slit piece of paper, adhered it, and then my second step was to add these strips to the outside on the top and the bottom. So we are still just taping it all together. You can absolutely use glue. I feel like I've used a lot of glue this summer so far. It's not even summer since, <laughs> since we've all been at home. I've used a lot of glue. So I was excited to use some tape today. Yeah. Yeah, I like the, the only thing I ended up gluing were the strips at the top and the bottom. Everything else I did glue or uh, tape. Yep. And it's nice but if you have a stapler, but you don't need it. I mean, really, this whole thing can be put together with just some tape or just some glue. Yep. I'm going to pick two colors and twist. I think we're going to have a two color twisted pipe cleaner handle. What? That's so, awesome. Just saying, we were inspired by hearing what you guys were doing out there. I like it. There's some really cool stuff. We got a lot of people. Oh, we've got a few people that have used your idea, Catherine, of the paper strip that goes across the top. Yeah, totally. So no. I mean, you can very simply. See, I was thinking ribbon, but it ribbon doesn't stand up. And your idea, it would stand up. So I like that better than my ribbon. Yeah. So here, for those people who want to try the paper, this is kind of the result that you would get. Um, which I love that it coordinates really well um, and it will make it stand up. Very, very nice. All right. I love it. You guys, these lanterns look great. I'm loving these pictures. So we're doing the inside. Like I said, take your piece of paper, roll it up. This one takes a little bit more, you know, just kind of moment. I feel like everything else is really straightforward. You measure an inch, you cut an inch. This one, you're going to roll it in. Grab a piece of tape because you want it handy um, and make kind of uh, take your edges together to make that as your marker for size. And then what I did was pull it back out and adhere it together really well all the way down and then put it back in. So I felt like that was kind of the easiest path so that the inside of your lantern um, is stable. <laughs> so as you can see, I pulled it out, checking my size. Trying to make it as uniform as possible from top to bottom. This I actually felt like was the hardest part of the whole craft, which kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting this to be the hardest part. You're talking about taping the circle? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I 100% the hardest part. I, why is that? I guess cylinders are hard to make perfect. Learning That's of true. the day. That's why I was asking like how you put yours together, like which part you did first. I wish I had thought of that when I did it the first time, but at least I got it on the second shot. Turned out way better. The first one was a little wonky, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, we'll this is also good timing. I'm not sure how many kids out there are working on 3D shapes right now, but um, I know with some at-home learning, that was something on my daughter's list, and she was doing 3D shapes, so we were identifying cones and spheres and yeah, cylinders. Guys. She might sing the song for you. <laughs> but, um, and pyramids. And pyramids, yes. We had to take some pictures around the house of all of our 3D shapes. So I love this craft for I find a balloon. anyone <laughs> learning about 3D shapes as well as wanting to make a fun decoration to have to celebrate Memorial Day. 
Okay, so I slid my um, inside color in, and then what I'm gonna do next is make slits on either side right here where you can see my fingers and put in the pipe cleaner handle. Um, adhere it real quick at the bottom, and then we will be in business with a new lantern. For those of you guys who have already finished your lantern, always take a picture of it. If you're going to post it on Facebook or Instagram, you can use our hashtag, which is hashtag make it with Michaels, and show everybody your cool lantern that you did today. All right, so I did my slit on one side. Go ahead and line it up with my eyeballs and <laughs> do a slit on the other side. <laughs> Again, you can use a hole punch, but I couldn't find mine today. That's just how it works. When you think you have an organized craft area, as you can see behind me, and then you can't find the things that you need. Um, so Bellamy made a twisted two color Three color, excuse me. It is pink and blue wow. and purple. Those are all three of my favorite colors and they do go together. There you go. Very pretty, Bellamy. <laughs> so we're sliding like that, that through mm -hmm. and just twisting them together, leaving about an inch to make your little twist so that your handle can stay put on one side and then doing the same again on the other Very side. Very awesome. And then we will have another lantern. And just, I, I'm seeing a few questions. Again, the hashtag was hashtag make it with Michaels. Yes. And yes, we are recording. And yes, you can find this on our website. It will be up tomorrow. And you can check out, oh, thank you. You can check out all the other Kids Club classes that we've done. Um, and Thursday is our next one at three central time. Uh, and we'll be doing a craft stick craft. Also, um, red, white, and blue themed, unless I decide to go rogue and do neon again. Um, but yeah, hope, hope you can join us. There we go. Yes. We can't wait to see yours. Oh man, you did three. You guys. <laughs> well, in all fairness, one was not done on camera today. <laughs> Overachievers. That one can be good. I love it. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Happy crafting. Happy crafting. See you Thursday. See you Thursday. Bye, Bellamy. Bye.